Hey, welcome back to Ready, Set, Sold with your host, Brian Boat. Uh, just briefly, I wrote a book uh, this year. It became a number one bestseller called Ready, Set, Sold, 12 Proven Steps to Sell Your House Fast and for a Top Dower in the St. Louis Metro East. And that stemmed from the book, writing the book, the radio station, 1260 Answer, contacted me and said, hey, how about doing a weekly radio program? And this is, uh, this is where we're at. So it's a, it's a cool thing. So I'm happy to do it. It's, it's, it's fun, and it's just another way of being able to get the information out to, to, to people who, uh, again, this is the biggest investment that most people are ever going to have uh, to sell, and you want to make sure you get it right and you get top down and fast sale. And that's what we're dedicated to here to do. So I talked about before is, is what if you don't have, quote unquote, that extra bedroom or that extra bathroom? Well, first off, you have to decide how important is it? Okay, and the reason why I say that is, is location, location, location. Are you the only house that only has, we'll just use three bedrooms? Uh, that all the other houses have four, or they have five bedrooms. Well, here's the good news. After you hit the three mark, it kind of goes four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, whatever. Okay. Three bedrooms, uh, statistically, I think it's 1.7 children that most people have if they have children at all. And I don't know what that 0.7 kid looks like, but hey, I'm sure that, you know, I'm sure it works out okay. But I think you get my point is, is that, is that, you know, that's, that's a pretty standard thing. So if you have three bedrooms, um, my first advice would be professional opinion would be is, is don't be worrying about trying to get that fourth or fifth one in there. Again, your rate of return, the cost, the time, aggravation at times, whatever, is not going to usually pay for itself to getting that extra bedroom in there. So that's the first thing you have to understand. The other thing is, is where are you going to put it? I mean, the house was built in a certain level of having three bedrooms or having two baths. So it may sound like a good idea, but it could be very difficult. Again, many times people say, well, I'll put it in the basement. Well, again, uh, maybe. Um, but again, if you just have one bedroom, standalone bedroom, it might be more punishment for the child that has to go down there and sleep down there or the person that's asleep down there than, than a benefit. No, I understand that, yes, you're going to have teenagers that want their independence. I get that. But again, we're always going for the many versus the few. And so what does most people want to have? And they want to have their, 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 their bedrooms above level whenever possible. It doesn't mean that it's a bad thing if you have a, a bedroom in your basement and you have the windows and you have everything, the closet and everything for access in that. But it isn't such a must. And that's one of the problems that we see. And sometimes we see that from agents, unfortunately, that they put the fear into buyers, excuse me, the seller's minds that if you only have, you know, X amount that you'll never sell it. In most cases, it's going to, again, the location, location, location. It would presume that every home has to have four bedrooms. And even if it does, even if there's a little bit of a price difference, you probably, when you bought the house, that was probably a factor that played into it also. That maybe because it had three bedrooms, you didn't pay quite as much for a four bedroom, but not very much. Again, we're not talking you know gigantic numbers, because when it's all said and done, is is what is a bathroom worth? I know that our, our an extra bedroom worth, and that's where the problem comes in. Simply put, is there's these there's these numbers that somebody in New York City or California or whatever, they calculate these numbers and whatever, and they say, they spit out a number saying this is what an extra bathroom is worth or an extra bedroom is worth. Uh, look, just in our market, we just don't see that. We don't see that. So it's better just to use what you have and, and go with that. Again, if you've done the updates, that's going to be a big plus to you. Not to throw it over what you don't have. Again, where are you going to put it? The same thing goes with bathrooms, too. Again, if you have two bathrooms, yeah, it would be great if maybe one of them was, you know, they both had showers in them or they both had ways to, ways to do that, uh, you know, bathtubs or whatever. But if they're one and a half, it's not the end of the world. Again, the cost factor of getting these things done, I mean, the average bathroom remodel or putting a new bathroom in, I think it's something close to $10,000. Again, you're not going to get that return investment all back anyway, the $10,000. You may get a third of it if you're lucky. It's not counting the time and the money. So what do you do if you really do feel, though, that maybe you're in a, in a tight spot? Maybe you don't, 
Maybe you literally are the only one that has two bedrooms and one bath. Again, first thing first, you look at where the location is. How much is that going to affect you in the pricing? What did you actually pay for the home when you bought it for two bedroom and one bath? Those are factors to keep in mind. The other thing that you can do, and sellers have had some great success with, and that is, is making that one bathroom, if you have one bathroom, making that sucker pop. Okay, so maybe you spend that extra instead of trying to put ten thousand dollars in a new bathroom, spend a thousand or two and get some ceramic tile down there. Make sure that the mirror is updated and the lighting is updated and the sink, which you'd be doing anyway. But just really maybe go that extra, uh, 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 spend a couple hundred dollars more and really make this thing pop. Maybe on the vanity and also in the shower. That can have great success. You maybe you only have one bathroom, but we've seen buyers say it may be one bathroom, but boy, it beats the heck out of that last house we saw that it had two semi-decent bathrooms that were okay, but this one really pops. Again, you also have a situation when you have that, the family you're doing. Again, it's not you're not going to attract four people or six people in a family to a two bedroom, one bath home to start with. You're, you're already gonna be attracting either first time home buyers, usually that may be a couple that maybe have one child, maybe they have no children yet. So understanding where you're going after and that's usually gonna work out. You can do the same thing with the kitchen too. So you can do the same thing with the bathroom and kitchen. So I mean, again, we've seen sellers put a, definitely putting a black splash on the back behind the cabinets, which is a great idea anyway, even if, even if you have everything going in your favor, the bedrooms and bathrooms. And again, taking that same ceramic towel, maybe putting into the kitchen. Usually the houses are a little bit smaller, the two bedrooms and one bathrooms. So the cost really isn't as, as bad as what people think. But again, your end game is to get top dollar and a fast sale. And those things, uh, doing these things do work. As with my book, again, it's 12 proven steps. It's not theory, it's not conjecture, it's not hope and a prayer. These are 12 proven steps. If you follow these plans, you're gonna have get top dollar and a fast sale. You listen to Ready, Set, Soul with Brian Vogt, and I will be back with the tip of the week.